This is the best or worst podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Koji Steven Sakai and M. Martin Mapoma. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the best or worst podcast. I am Martin. And I am Mr. Koji. Mr. Koji, our society is so focused on celebrity, we sometimes forget that regular people lead interesting lives too. Best or worst moment of your life, hosts Koji Stephen Sakai and That's M. Me. Martin Mapoma. That's right, that is you. And me, M. Martin Mapoma, are here to let your story out. We put people on the spot. What are you going to hear? It could be funny. It could be poignant. It could be sad. You'll know when we know. Best or Worst Podcast is a twice-weekly podcast. On Tuesdays, we get to know our guests. And on Thursdays, we find out their best or worst moment. And today is Tuesday. So we get Tuesday, to know. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. We get to, we're getting to know our guests. Uh, first of all, I didn't realize, I, I, I thought you were for a long time in, in Kansas City because that's where you, last time I spoke to you. But now you're in Denver. So congratulations. Yeah. How would you describe what you do for a living? Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so folks actually call me biz dev, uh, and the best way to describe it is air traffic control. Okay. Right. Huh. So it's like, um, there are, I, I, I have the privilege and joy of managing an A&R executive, uh, Steve Rhythm and supporting him in creating his vision of music, culture, and entertainment. Right. So that can be dealing with brands. I get you are um, the best way to, you ever, you guys ever see zero effect? No. Yeah. I'm yeah. Ben Stiller, right? So I'm the guy that shows up with the briefcase with nothing in it. And I yeah. tell you like, he needs a ham sandwich, two cell phones and an airplane ticket. Airplane ticket to where? <laughs> He'll figure that out, right? And it's like, he comes back yeah. with the case yeah, yeah. solved and you're like, how did he find her? And he's like, I don't know. It's not, I don't, he doesn't tell me, right. That, that's literally my job. So I get the calls in the morning that are like, I need to get a building. Okay. Really? okay. Yeah. Yeah. To do what? Right. And then I get the whole lowdown and I'm like, huh, I do know a guy who has a building and he's doing nothing with it. So I get to connect him and, and just be a resource person. Right. And, and artists who are like, you know, I need to, uh, I need to figure out how to get on, puma's website okay so you're, you're like the you're like the out. wolf you're like the wolf in pulp fiction <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly i'm the guy who gets called in to figure that stuff out yeah. so i need to it, get a good web designer <laughs> to yeah, fix my I website got, <laughs> i got a bunch of those man that, we'll, we'll settle i'll say i'll shout out to no, man. After the call. Boy, do I, ever, I actually oh, ran an geez. agency so i ran oh, an agency okay. for two years so my background has been traditionally uh, business development in media, technology, and entertainment. Oh, that's really so cool. I was on the software side for a while. And, uh, you know, my joke is that I know people in the outhouse, jailhouse, and the White House. Right? So <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn, oh. New York, one of, the, one of the poorest neighborhoods in Brooklyn. And Brooklyn. I was like the scholarship kid, right? So yeah. all of a sudden I'm going to school with billionaires. And then at uh, five o'clock, I'm back in the hood. <laughs> wow. So oh, over time, cool. I just figured out a way to make it work for me. And now it's like, you know, rappers were like, how do I get to Coca-Cola? And I'm like, kid I went to school with is actually the director of marketing. Really? How do you know that? I'm like, what? So I get to be that. <laughs> and yet, and yet cool. we've, never, we've never worked together yet, officially. We need to work on a project yeah, together. <laughs> we absolutely do. I think that's on par for this is, this is the catalyst that's going to have that happen for 21. Let's for go. Sure. I mean, this, there is we the, go. this is the year for, for projects to happen, especially, you know, Absolutely. Especially low budget, like we were talking about earlier. Um, but what, yeah, what, when you, when you were younger, what did you want to do? Did you, did you always know you wanted to do this? No, actually I wanted to be a producer. So like I'm a music uh, producer. Yeah. Music producer? Okay. okay, cool. Yeah. So I've also played guitar since the time I was six. Oh, and, wow. Uh, it was never cool to be the guitar player. Right. And I'm 48. So right around 1991, 92, and everyone was like, oh man, we started producing beats and people were like, you know how much they charged me to use that loop? And they're like, I actually don't get anything from the song now, right? And they were like, hey, you play guitar. Bring that guitar over here. And I just started doing that. And then uh, once I went away to college, all my friends who stayed in the hood were signing the labels and all this sort of stuff. So by the time I came out of college, it was like, 
I'm not going to start rapping and producing now, right? It's like, let me figure out a, another way to make myself useful. And that's oh. kind of when all this other stuff started to develop. All right. Oh. Here's, here's the most wow. important question. Greatest producer of all time. And you're oh, saying man. producer. Hip hop. Ah, yeah, uh-huh. hip-hop. that is a challenge. So <laughs> I think I know what you're going to say, Koji. <laughs> Maybe not. I know who I think it is. Talk about putting somebody on the spot. I'm sorry. I know, right? It has to be somewhere between DJ Premier. He's dope. And Dr. Dre. I was going to say Dre, yeah. Although there's a lot. What about Rick Rubin? So that's what I'm saying. Like, Rick Rubin is a different kind of producer. Yeah. Right? Almost like a man. Absolutely. Well, no, he's like a, he's like a, Sherpa, you know what I mean? Like he almost talks you into the record. Like, well, what are you really trying to say? Are you trying to convey? <laughs> like he's that guy, right? Yeah. Premier's the guy you go into the studio with. You're just like, what's that playing? And how can I have that? Right? It's like DJ Premier, Primo. Man. Yeah, Primo's gonna come with a clip. You know, he's gonna come with a clip, and you're gonna be like, wow, I like that, and I like that, and I like that. And Rick Rubin's the guy who's gonna be like, oh, that's your album throw it in the trash and be like, okay, so what are you really trying to say? You're like, that was, that was what I was trying to say. You know what I mean? You just threw it in the garbage, man. Right. He's like a whole other thing. It's it's like there are producers who like execute the music and they're cool because of the way that they do that. Like Dilla, I can't even say Dilla is my favorite producer because Dilla one didn't get really get a chance to do what he was going to do. Right. But two, his whole vision was like bringing this new cultural swing. But he was executing it from a whole other place. He was learning to play drums. And so it's hard. You know, people are great at what they do. Right. And if I had to just sort of knee jerk reaction, I go to Premiere and to Dre because they've made the records that have moved things. Right. I think that if Dilla had another 10 years, he'd be he would be that guy right like all this stuff you hear from dylan now are people just kind of going through beats and then recording over beats that's yeah. uh that's going through somebody's closet right and being yeah. like oh this fits right <laughs> yeah and, and they're not there to be like yeah but i want to hem this part and stitch yeah. this let's take this piece in right so it's a loaded question, Koji. <laughs> <laughs> that's Koji, man. Sorry about that's, that. the, that's the who's your favorite, Dr. J or Michael Jordan? Oh, oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> who do I betray? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think the better uh, question would be LeBron and MJ. Right. Like, those and, the, yeah, and still we've had problems. It's kind of like, who's the, who's, like, who's, like, like, who's the greatest rapper ever? Obviously, besides, well, you know, Eric B. Wait, 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 wait. There's only one, dude. What are you Rakeem. talking about? Rakim. It's Pac, Pac dude. <laughs> oh, it's not even close, man. This is obviously going to be an hour fraught with, <laughs> fraught with arguments. I, I say Rakim. Like, and I'm going to keep my mouth set because I. Oh, I wanted to hear your opinion. I wanted to hear your opinion. Oh, come on. Oh, that was more, man. I'm just saying. I'm just oh. saying. There's a guy from. There's a guy from a place called Brooklyn who didn't get a chance to really air it out. And I, oh. I hesitate to put the greatest on him, but I got to put the greatest on him. You know what? I think I, he, he passed away, right? Wait, he what? did. I think what? I know who you're talking about. What do you mean? It's I like think I know who you're talking about. Of course, it's, it's B.I.G. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> of course I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, this, you know, okay. okay. I, I'm going to say, yeah, of course. Biggie, he's obviously your guy. He's, he's obviously your yeah. guy. Yeah. What I'll because say about that. Because you don't understand. Had he lived, yeah. This whole trajectory of hip hop would never have happened. For sure. Well, same thing. I mean, I think right, the whole money yeah. thing, we would have had to find. He was like, if you got money, pull up, right? Yeah. I, I'm not doubting you have the money, just pull up. Yeah. And if you don't pull up, then stop talking about it. And yeah. all of those folks who followed after would have had to have stayed in their books. They would have had to kept actually writing. They would have had to keep actually improving themselves. Of course. Well, right? That's they what I say about Tupac, like, too. I mean, both, the, both of them died. Yeah really changed the game yeah it allowed people to come in and say things that before were sacred yeah right you would never talk about money you didn't have on a record that it was just you just your own people would be like don't do that bro rick rick ross is was is a uh was a uh, corrections officer 
Yeah. <laughs> like, what? what? But, but now, in all fairness, but now, in all fairness, my sister's a corrections officer, and some of those folks need to be criminal rappers. <laughs> it's the same people. Listen, man, it's True. the same no, people no, you grew up with. I feel the like same I people you grew up with. They just were like, yo, I wouldn't got a badge. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I say, what I say about Biggie is, I mean, lyrically, I mean, I, I think he's probably, you might be number one in, in the end in of the game, but an overall rapper, it's, it's not even close. It's Pac. Pac had, Pac, Pac said more in his, in his things. And uh, this, but the other thing is, and, and, like business wise, what I think is interesting is Biggie had he had an amazing talented person around him, Sean Sean, right? Puffy. Sure. And he, Puffy was the guy that was like in his ear telling him, you know, that's lame. Redo that, do this, do this, this is what this is what you could do. To a degree. Yeah. To a degree. But Pac didn't have anybody like that. Everyone in Pac's life was like, Yes, Pac, that's amazing. That's amazing. So that's why half of Pac's albums are terrible because he doesn't have yeah, anything left him. to his own devices. Whereas like Biggie was like his whole, his whole album is dope. Like every, there's not a single bad song on any of his albums. Uh, the ones that but that was also, was, that was the vibe. That was the culture. That was like, it can't be anything but. Yeah. But I think it's because you have a strong, somebody with him that's telling him the truth. You know, yeah. somebody who's like, I mean, it's both, you have to be talented, obviously, but you also have yeah. to have somebody who's like, Hey, that's dope. That's not dope. We, we're not putting that on this fucking album. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But no, it's, it's true. But yeah. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's always hard. And it's funny because that literally when you guys were telling me about the best of the worst, right, there's so much that goes into it because yeah. even your best day and your worst day, like you've had a few best days, you've had a few worst days, yeah. right? And where does it land in the context of your life? Yeah. Right. So it's like the same thing, trying to pick, you know, your favorite baseball player. Oh, <laughs> I don't. I don't want my other heroes to hear this, That's but easy. Kirby Puckett, come on, guys. <laughs> he was my favorite baseball right. player of all time. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, it's like, how do you, what, can, how do you give it context, man? Yeah. It's always hard. But for even, even for like, the best or worst though, it's, you know, for us, it's like, what has resonated with you? You know, like when, yeah. what, what is that moment that, you know, cause it might not be the best moment of your life, but it's that moment that changed shit, you know, that really absolutely like changed, the changed the trajectory of it. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. For sure. Well, so it's like, um, it's like, yeah, you get a bunch of those. Yeah. You live hard enough. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're at the end of this, this episode. Um, Martin, do you want to, you want to share about our, our link? Our quiz? Uh, if, could you, could you go ahead and do it for me, please? Okay. Yeah. Um, so basically in this, in this, uh, episode, we're asking people, we, we want to know more about you guys, the people that are listening. So we have a short, short survey where you, uh, we'll get to know you a little bit. It's five questions. Uh, anybody who finishes the quiz, will send you guys a, um, a book, a graphic novel that I wrote called 442. Um, and you know, from there we will, uh, we will hopefully find out more about the show. So please, uh, do that and come back on Thursday and we'll get to know our guests a little bit more. And we'll ask him the best or worst moment. Thank you, guys. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out.